Hello and welcome to this very short follow-up video for the jumbled up quiz application. This is just basically to point out some of the changes that have happened since the video was made, which was uploaded on Sunday slash Monday, uh, depending on which region you're in. Uh, and basically the version that, that is in a video is now known as version 1.0. Uh, since then we have done some minor tweaks uh, just to allow things like the um, answer and the timer to disappear after the timer runs out rather than it being hidden behind another plane. Uh, again, this is just to make things a little bit more effective, but also um, just to kind of tidy and make things more efficient. Okay, so some of the things that have changed since that video, uh, largely, um, and again, this entire screenshot of this patch setup will be linked in this description, but was also linked in the original video. And I'm not going to explain how this is all set up because again, that video is still fairly true. The only things that have changed are the slight adjustments that I'm mentioning in this video, but also shown in that screenshot. So uh, we have our camera kickoff. It starts off playing our, uh, our audio, and then we have our um, timer and our UI and our questions and logo up here. That's exactly the same as it was before. Uh, the only thing that we have changed now is in regards to this is with the questions uh, in the original video we just used the visibility of the questions itself but we did have this null uh, object set up that had the questions parented to it but wasn't being utilized um, the reason it wasn't utilized at the time is i wasn't quite sure if this would work and it now does after i've done some more testing so using the questions null object so that null object we created before i've just changed the name to questions null just to make it more uh, clear in the documentation uh, but basically I used the visibility of that and I linked that to our camera so when our camera is recording the questions or everything that is parented to it will appear so in this case it's the questions and answers and timer elements which are contained within it um, basically uh, they all appear um, but when the effect finishes and the timer runs out at the end so here we have our answer appearing uh, we've also now added a not gate and this not gate will turn off the questions plane so this was the original one that was attached at the beginning we're now attaching the questions plane to the end to the equals exactly that's here so we want to make sure it's a not to questions and the timer we've created another null object and we've called that timer null we've made the timer plane a child of that timer null object so again it's just a null object that I've called timer null and that is activated at the beginning but with the delays so this takes the place of what was the originally just a timer and the original timer that we had in that video is now linked at the end and as a one second delay so that one second just gives it enough time to show the times up for my uh, example here and then that will disappear so the null object now is just to control the initial um, launch of these planes and the individual planes themselves are going to be controlled uh, independently at the end. And I've just found that a lot more efficient. Uh, it just means we can control different elements with a bit more finesse. And again, uh, that's totally up to you. Uh, some issues that people have cropped up and I'm going to just address now and how to sort of troubleshoot. And again, with every video I do, I'd always recommend reading official documentation, uh, checking against version um, and devices expectations on the Spark AR developer website, but also within the Spark AR Facebook community. So what some of the issues uh, some people have addressed up with is text being static or not accepted. So as I've kind of clarified uh, in a video a while ago, I said you can't use at symbols, you can't use hashtags. Text ideally can't be static. And by static, I mean, it can't be like, you know, non-moving, it should move with the user. So in this case, this logo here that moves across and follows my head would be fine. However, the uh, UI element, um, which is the little logo that appears in the top corner here, could cause some issues. That would be because it would be seen as a static object in where the actual text itself is animated as a sequence. Uh, the text itself doesn't move. Uh, to fix that, I could put a transition and an animation in there with a loop animation just to give it some, like, you know, movement and to give it some motion. Uh, and that might get around it, um, but Spark AR approval processes are always iffy when it comes to text or brands. 
In fact, it's best where possible to keep away from text and brands uh, just to be on the safe side. Okay, so that's one issue. Um, and uh, a kind of solution is to just review the text policies um, and you can contest, but um, because of the current situation, that may be difficult and it, it does seem to be at the limit and running in a limited capacity at the moment. Again, I don't know all the details. I'm, I don't, I'm not affiliated with the process. Um, I just have used the process in the past. Okay. Uh, another issue some people have had is their timer running out, um, but not showing the answer. Uh, once that time has run out um, and I would urge people that if that is the case to check that the actual equals exactly here is firing um, once the uh, value is reached uh, in this case the end frame so you'll notice here that I got my frame transition set to six even though I only have um, I want it to only check to five uh, I found that if I had the uh, frame transition equals the same as the equals exactly uh, it wouldn't necessarily, it would always be one less when it comes to the equals exactly, when it comes to the signal being transmitted. Therefore, the answer would never show, essentially. Um, that's in relation to also making sure that our animation duration is more than the time of, or number of frames that we have. So you'll notice again, like I said, that I've got about roughly five seconds, six seconds, give or take. Uh, I've used 10 seconds. Um, and I've kind of eyeballed it to what I think is a reasonable time. Uh, some people also may have had a, a notice that the timer starts at the beginning um, and when they have like 10 seconds that sometimes if they haven't adjusted their sort of duration value down here uh, respectively that sometimes this timer here will begin before this less than is here. So you will notice that my less than value is free and I made sure that to be the same as my delay. This means that the timer and the end result are shown at the same time. Whereas if I have my delay less than my equals exactly, which is linked to my offset runtime, um, my timer would actually start before the uh, randomizer has selected its option. Therefore, you might look like you're missing some frames or images in your timer. That's essentially um, troubleshoot, basic troubleshooting. Uh, I'd also make sure that you have everything correctly linked up. Um, and again, like I said, refers to the images that I will have in the description. Uh, I have also updated the Gumroad pack uh, to be version 1.1. Those who have already purchased it will have already uh, received notification and will have been able to already download this uh, update. So this is the version you see on screen now with uh, clearer annotations. Uh, what else have I tweaked? Let's just double check here. Uh, everything else is largely the same. Like I said, I just created a null object for the timer and used my questions null object to be the controller at the initial stage. Uh, some other small things I'm going to be doing with this jumbled up quiz effects because I'm going to continue tweaking and working on it. So I'd always encourage you to check the original video and any following videos for amendments um, because as things change in software, versions change. Um, some effects here might break at some point because I might take away a patch or change the process. So in that case, um, I can't always keep up to date, but I will try to update the image of the patch sequence in the in the down below, rather than just re-record the entire video again every single time that there's a amendment. It just uh, is a bit, lot more efficient, and that way you're not going to keep getting bored of the same content being repeated. Uh, what I will be also be doing is adding on to this. So when I do add-ons, uh, I mean, I'll be on uh, my Gumroad page. I will be uh, selling um, add-ons, so extra animations, buttons, UI elements, UX elements, icons, etc. These will be in, all be open source uh, and can be used any way you wish to, um, freely, etc. Um, and any major additions will also be updated and sold at a discounted rate on the Gumroad as well. Uh, Patreon users will always get access to this stuff. Uh, in terms of Patreon changes, uh, there will be a dedicated video on that, but I'm just going to quickly mention it now. Uh, Patreon uh, tiers or tier one will now every month receive a asset mini pack, which will be a collection of world free images, um, icons, animations, and raw files that people will be able to use again however they wish to. Um, etc. And that will only be a, every month for a new mini pack 
and you'll be able to get the mini pack that's uh, available to you at the point of you still being subscribed. So if you're subscribed for two months, you'll get two months worth of mini packs. If you subscribe for one month, you'll just get that one month's pack essentially. The theme for May, which is the first uh, date of it's all changing, uh, will be um, quizzes and that kind of um, quiz show element, which again makes sense seeing as this is the most recent video I've done. Um, also, I've changed the way that I can be contacted, and again, there'll be a dedicated video on this uh, for later in the week. But essentially, now if you wish to contact me, email me in the address down below. Uh, do not try and contact me on social media. Unfortunately, I cannot help everybody. Again, there's so many different devices and weird quirks that can happen depending on people's setups. Um, machines, phones, all these different elements do come into play and I can't solve everything. So instead, I'm now encouraging um, an email and don't expect an immediate response. Uh, and if I don't respond, don't feel like um, I'm kind of ignoring you. It's more a case of it might have just got lost in the sort of swampage of emails that I sometimes get um, bombarded with. So this is just, like I said, this is just a very quick amendment and I will, again, I will um, leave the, the screenshot of the setup down below. Uh, the real changes again, just to repeat one more time, is this creation of this null object being activated and a new null object for our timer. Uh, with text, try and avoid static text um, and avoid uh, text as much as possible if you can. Uh, again, everything I create is meant to be used for reference, not as a finished product. And try and optimize your files where possible. I've been Steen Fisher, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you again in May, which is only tomorrow from the date of this video. So, goodbye.